so hello everyone so this is our webinar the last one for the year uh it, we're going to talking about the data century ai and the foundation models so yeah this is the last webinar we're going to host for the year for, for 2021 yeah for the year right so a lot of happened in this year for the society for the for the global community and also a lot of things change for the machine learning landscape right we we like i think for this year i think thousands of hundreds of thousands of companies deployed a new service which is which is powered by machine learning models into the production and start to creating their values into for the real world but then well we if, since since then we learned a lot from these real world scenarios like so how we started learning how do we operate in this kind of service and how do we deploy this kind of service how do we make sure they are working and they are not harming 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 anyone so yeah this for this web we back web now i think we are going to quickly go it's kind of like a recap for the year and we are going to highlight some of the points that we think is worth rethink was our was worth thinking about like uh, for example the data century ai movement and the foundation model evolutions yeah okay so yeah so so for this year i think uh, everyone already know this process is that so uh, we we as developers starting to put machine learning service into productions in the uh, really rapid pace and and then for what is what is the machine learning service and what is included in the production service right? so uh there's a, a lot of steps steps in the in the problem and it's basically kind of like a, a really complex interdependent multi-stage pipeline for the whole process like you for first you need to do the data processing and then after you find maybe you spend like multiple weeks to actually figure out and to clean up your data, then you start training your model. And after that, you have to have some kind of like a model registry to do the versioning, to keep tracking of the, what kind of model you have and what, which model you have to deploy to the production. And then it's the serving part where you're going to actually deploy the model to the production to set up API server, et cetera. And then finally, you need to do the monitoring right just like every 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 other software service in the real world you need to make sure the service is still running correctly efficiently scalability is, is correct and if there's anything 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 any models happen you need to react quickly that's the nature of the web service right so that's a, that's you, well every single stage in this graph can can be like a one hour talk or more but today we're going to focus on two things that's kind of like we actually learned a lot about actually we finally started learning a lot about these these two problems in the in 2021 because we finally get like a lot of real world deployment is happening so the two points we are going to talk about today is about the model monitoring and the model development workflow. Okay, so first the model monitoring. Yeah, and so you uh well uh after you put just like what I said, if, if you put the model into production, the first thing you are thinking about is that okay, so how do we how do I monitor this? But the even more important question for this is what are you going to monitor? Right. So for traditional web service, like uh, we can, we have a lot of like really straightforward matrix to to monitoring, like the availability, the uptime, the performance, like the, the latency of the request, this kind of thing. But for mod for machine learning service, it's not so simple. So for for, for model monitoring, uh, there's a, a lot of different perspectives you want to monitor. Like for example, the scalability. Like do you does your model actually uh, can be performing performing correctly in a in a production? Is it consuming too much resource? This is kind of like a basic of oper operational matrix and a, a and for sure availability. Like is the model still running correctly or is is crash or like returning some kind of errors? And finally, which is the hard part, is like how do we actually monitor the 
the your machine learning service quality because uh, it's not like traditional software deployment. There's a lot of uncertainty and non-deterministicism in the, in, the, in the service. Like it's, it's, if the model by itself is contains some kind of uncertainty in the result of the model. So how do you keep track of that? And to keep track of the, to monitor this kind of a quality change, you have a lot of like fundamental issues. Like uh, do you have to go through data? <clears throat> because, well, if you don't know the answer, then how do you know? The real model is working correctly. Then you have to, if you don't have an answer, you have to rely on some kind of like statistic distribution or statistic matrix to to actually try to guess if there's a, a data drift happening. And also, the matrix is kind of like really hard to define because, well, for example, uh, if you are you want your service accuracy is ninety percent, is that good or bad? It's actually you have to put in some kind of context to actually figure it out. So if it's if the if it, the task is, is performed by a human and it and the accuracy will be only sixty percent, then ninety percent is really great. But if the the task can be executed perfectly by the human, then ninety percent maybe not so good. So there's a lot of complex problem you have to think about when you do model monitoring. But there's something we we know we we learn in the in the years in this year, like so you you the the, the point to do more monitoring is not really about the performance of your model. Well, the mo the the performance of your model is important, but that's not everything, because well the key is to monitoring the quality of your whole machine learning service, which is the which is the whole uh, interdependent multi stage pipeline. So you need to talk, you need to monitor, what you need to monitor is the quality. And the quality is sometimes it's really hard to automate it because like, for example, if you are doing some kind of fraud detection project and the, the by nature, this kind of detection is, should, is really hard to do because you are dealing with criminals and uh, you, what you are going to monitor is, the, is the, your service performing better than the human investigators. That's why you're going to, Monitor and to do this kind of monitoring, you have to collaborate with a lot of different other de departments. Like you need to understand like how do, does the human investigator do in the fraud detection? How do you compare the performance with them? Right. So you have so first is you 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 need to start focusing on just the models performance. You have to focus on the quality of the whole service and. Just like what I said, the model is a really small part of the whole service. It's kind of like just one stage in your multi-stage pipeline. And uh, and actually the model's performance is, can be impacted by a lot of different different variables. Like, so most of the time, is the, if the model is performing badly, we call it a modeling failure. But most of the time, the failure is caused by the infrastructure failure or by the data errors. So, what do I mean? So, for example, uh, this is a common common scenario that happening in, in the real life is that so the model is working kind of correct, correctly, but what what's caused? But suddenly you notice a performance drop for your for your service. Then you try to figure out why. And then finally you figure out, oh, okay, the reason is that, so there's a bug in the data pipeline. So you miss some of the data, uh, which costs your model performing badly. But is that the model's fault? No, it's, the, it's a bug in your data pipeline. And some other common problem is like, so maybe there's a, a process, the data processing error causing the, the numbers coming out of the data pipeline is incorrect. So maybe some of the value are all becoming zeros. And, but this is a minor part of all the data and you, you're, you, they might not be noticeable by your human or by your logging service. And the model just keep doing its training. So the model learned the incorrect behavior from the from incorrect data. So to do this kind of machine learning quality monitoring, you need to have the whole picture. But this is really expensive and re really hard right now. But this is what we learn, and we have to figure out what how to deal with that. So just doing more interesting for the model performance is not enough for the real world machine learning service. So so yeah, so go back to 
to the machine learning quality. So one key part to think about this problem, this problem is really hard and really expensive to solve, is that uh, you have to focus, focus on your data and you have to focus on your problem because, well, defining a problem is more important than picking a model because most models work well with the right objective. So by defining an environment, I mean, you have to define the matrix and the KPI for your problem. Like how do you evaluate the quality of your service? Uh, this is this is a really key important first step for for building a real in, for building an impactful machine learning service, and the quality of data matters more than picking models because most models work well with the right data. I think this is well known for everyone doing machine learning, but we still worth highlighting because sometimes we kind of limit ourselves from the data. But in the real world, I think data the generation of data is really fast and. We have to keep up. We have to move our focus, you know, focus on the fancy new models. We don't have to. We should not focus too much on the fancy new models. Instead, we have to focus on our data and the, the process of generating the data. And finally, understanding the model behavior becomes just as important as raw, raw performance, because you can improve what you can understand. Uh, that's also a really important part of the thinking. And there's an old saying in the in the programming world is that. Uh, don't try to be too smart for your for your code because uh, because debugging a code is required is even harder than writing the code. So if you are being too smart for your code, then you can debug it. And this is kind of like a, the same line of thinking uh, is that well the model well most of us are not really the expert on the on the model research or on, on the neural network architecture. But so keep that part simple because most of most model works pretty well if you got the right data. So focus on the data. Data is your data is generated from your domain knowledge from your process, and you should be you should have one hundred percent clear idea on the data, like how does it work? Is the quality of data correct? That's 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 your domain knowledge. That's your business value. So you should focus on the data instead of the model. Yeah. Okay, then let's move on to the second point we want to talk about. So we are going to talk about machine learning workflow. So if you are, to, uh, come, you are only doing the simple projects like in, in the school, this is what you're going to think. Okay, so this is like how I'm going to do a machine learning work project, right? So first, I got I prepare some data and I and I open my note, notebook and to write some code to load it to retrain it. Blah, blah, blah. And then finally, I have a model that it might work, might not work. That's this, this is the process you imagine by most people. And this is most of a tool you imagine you know, when they are modeling and, and trying to help you automate the workflow. But, but in, the, in the real world, I think this is a really cool idea from Stanford. Uh, is that so? They're talking about AI is undergoing a pattern shift with the rise of models that are trained broad, on broad data scale mm -hmm. and are adaptable to a wide range of downstream tasks. Mm -hmm. We call this model foundation models. So, uh, so I think uh, a lot of people already know it. For the this year, we got GPT 3, we got BERT, mm -hmm. we got a lot of models that's kind of impossible for, mm -hmm. for small companies or small teams to train because you write mm -hmm. quite a huge amount of data and huge amount of computing resources to train. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like a bad block force problem because we cannot reproduce them, but we can adapt them to our own task, right? For um, if I'm doing some kind of NLP projects, I can use I can fine tune a GPT-3 or BERB model to for my usage. And so this 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 kind of model are called are being called as foundation models by the Stanford's and. Yeah, they, they, they are becoming quite a critical part for our machine learning workflow, but we, we actually didn't fully understand them yet, but they are becoming a critical part. So the late in the, the modern day of machine learning is an iterative process, right? So it's more about like, so, okay, so first you get a working model, maybe just just download the existing train, pre-trained model, maybe like a bird, a robot, a GPT-3 model for the internet, and then you figure out your data. So you fine tune the, the foundation model with your data, and then you deploy the service, service to, to get more data from the real world. And then you use the new data you get from the real world to fine tune the model again. 
So this kind of in becomes in a feedback. Mm -hmm. the, the more, most more important part for this process is about the feedback of the retraining mm -hmm. and fine tuning and to use the result mm -hmm. of your retrain or fine tune the model to get a new data, new data from the real world. And so for this process, mm -hmm. I think you can already notice that. So mm -hmm. the model becoming some kind of a commodity, mm -hmm. right? So uh, you model kind of like interchangeable for this process because well if it's some some genius in the academy or in the google train train the new model or create a new model brand new model that's performing way better than merge and then well they are going to be published then you can just grab that and try use your own data to fine tune them the model to make it more suitable for your task so that's the process. In, in this process, the most important part will be the speed of the feedback loop. Like, so how fast can you fine tune the date, the model, and to get more data and to fine tune it again? So you're kind of like doing a specialized process to from a general purpose model to a model that is specialized for your, your problem, right? So the problem becomes uh, strong. So the problem becomes like, so how, uh, how do I like kind of like a genius inventing a new new model to like so how fast can I iterate on the process on the process and on the problem and the speed of iteration requires a data central workflow because uh, so if you go back to the previous workflow picture you can see that the, the most tedious part and I think a lot of people doing machine learning right now will understand that so like like 60 60 percent of the of your work or 90 percent 80 percent of your work is about fine-tuning and transform, transforming giving up the data so if you get a better, better infrastructure you can you can you can spend a, a lot less of time for, on this process and you get faster iteration time and another key aspect of this is that so you're going to have quite a lot of models like for example you want to solve one problem maybe fraud detection maybe maybe revenue forecasting you are not just going to solve a problem with one models because right now as as the reality of the world um, models are quite limiting on the, their usage on, the, on what they can do so you so one for one problem you might need like tens of hundreds of, of models to, to work together to solve a problem well, then, then you have to manage these hundreds of models right now. So I think it's quite common for you to have like hundreds of models deployed in your production. And then the problem becomes like a warehouse manager. Like how do you find out which model is you have to use, which model is working correctly, which model is not, because it's not like, it's not like a, a really special product anymore. It's more like a commodity. And to solve this kind of problem, I think uh, this, this is kind of becoming a metadata management problem because it's about avoiding the, some kind of information. I would call it as ghost knowledge or folklore. So what is ghost knowledge? Ghost knowledge is, is that something that is, is this, some kind of knowledge that exists. People know this kind of knowledge if they are the insider of the team and they take to get granted. So if, if I'm an outsider, I'm a newcomer for this project, then uh, no one will think that, okay, so you need to actually learn this knowledge because they, they took it as granted. Like, so for example, a common example for less will be like, who owns this data? If the data has problem, who should I consult? Like, so, so maybe there's some kind of old wizard that pre-create this data type of pipeline like 20 years ago, then if they have found a weird with column in the data, then I have to ask him, but who is this guy? So this guy is kind of a ghost knowledge for the data process thing, and this is going to take quite a lot of time to fix the process. So this is going to be the key part for the your speed operations. And everything else will just be, will slowly and surely become common like the computations, like foundation. This kind of thing, like starting to, like okay, so you just pay the money and they will come to you naturally. So you don't have to, you don't have to think about it too much because everyone's using the same kind of computation power and same kind of foundation model. 
what differentiate you from the companies or the data you have. And sure, you have to have some kind of data. You have the data share detection to have the best reaction time because the data share is going to destroy the performance of your machine learning service. So uh, you have to have some kind of infrastructure to this kind of change. Okay, yeah. So this is kind of uh, so to summarize, less, I think uh, you you have to be you have to be aware that. So the data is not like, so not that one time thing that, okay, so I collect this data and then it's done. It is no, the most of the data is not the data that you were thinking about like social data or the financial data. It's actually the, your own data because in your daily process, you're in your best daily process, you want to generate a lot of data. And that's going to be the key part of your your innovation and the differentiator for your machinery service because if you you treat your yourself your problem and your process as, as a data problem then you can see that okay so i actually generate a lot of data every day and you like the data just like not just like the business data also like the, how does my machinery service work does they performing well what kind of data they are collecting from the real world uh, in when when they are doing the inference that's going to be the differentiator for your machine learning service. So this kind of like become like a well, this kind of like old, 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 for, for, for saying that. So you want to become a data oriented or their organization. So you don't want to just do a one off machine learning projects. You want to you want to integrate data into your daily process and put that machine learning into your everyday process. So uh, you have to learn from the history of software, software disruption. Like in, in like 30 years ago, I think everyone is doing software as a one-off project because okay, I want uh, a report for my car sales for this quarter. Then I have to write some code to, do the, to, to generate the report. But then some, some company figure out, so, so to iterate on this kind of software and do using this daily in the process actually speed up their value generation quite a lot. So just like what we're saying about like software is easy in your work, every company is becoming a software company. And for, for machine learning, it's not really different from the software. You, sh you should have, you should think of machine learning data collection and data process as a, your a process of your company. And, and you have, you, you just like thinking that, okay, so data is like the data we collect from our customers. It's not just about that. You also have to think about the metadata and everything that's, that's generated by your process and your system. Those are the byproducts of your system. Those are really important too. So to, uh, I think, so, yeah, so to keep it short, I think we, you can think that machine learning are just data-driven software that can be iterated at an even faster speed. So before, I think you have to hire other engineers to speed up your software development. But in the machine learning age, or you can call them software 2.0, you can say that iterate on the age is all about iterating on your data. And so to unlock this kind of iteration speed, you have to focus on the data and the data model and the model will become a commodity. So that's why uh, the subtitle for webinar is data century AI and the foundation model. Is that, well, actually when, it's, when a process becomes like mature in the real world, the, the iteration speed will always be focused and to unlock this speed, you have to focus on your data. And that's the data centric movement is talking about. And the model will become commodity. So you have to understand the behaviors and how do you, behaviors of the foundation models and how do you use them? What kind of problem they are suitable for? How do you fine tune them? That's the foundation model movement. So, so finally, what you have to rethink, I think we have to, start thinking about model monitoring because we have to think the mod and machine learning quality process. Yes, the whole process and the process is a data centric problem. And for the machine learning development workflow, we have to start thinking it as a linear process to 
it's actually a really very process and you have to focus on about, about the speed of iteration. So right now, maybe you, it requires like six months to get, get a new model, get a new version of your machine learning service. But I think that's the kind of speed is going to deprecate it really fast. And you're going to need a lot faster speed for that. OK, yeah. Thanks, everyone. So that's kind of like a quick recap on the change in the evolution. Okay, so, so yeah, thanks. So you have any question you have here, or you can use the email to contact us to have a deeper discussion. OK, thanks. Thank you, Poga. We have a few questions on the slide. And if you have any question, you can right now go online and ask, and we are going to answer your question. Let's check what do we get. Okay, the first question. Will a data-centric AI approach allow data team to iterate on fast data sets? Yeah, okay. So will a data-centric AI approach allow the data teams to iterate on fast data set? I think the answer is surely yes, because uh, because uh, if you have a vast amount of data set, I think that's what the question is about. Uh, you have to have a really good infrastructure, and you have to really good focus on like to manage all these kind of all these huge data sets. And the data set, if you have this, you if you can generate new data set every day, and then you will naturally become you will naturally put your more focus on the new data you get every day on a quality of the data, and the process naturally becomes some kind of a data centric approach. So I think this is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a leveraging each other situation. Like you need a lot of data set to folk to perform a data centric workflow, and yeah, and vice versa. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's answering the question. Oh, by the way, if you want to ask question or you, you the question you want to ask is already some other people posted, you can sum up and the question will be answered faster because it, it will get higher. Yeah, try try that. Okay. Our next question is metadata the same as experiment tracking? What do you think, Poga? Yeah, uh, okay, I think, I think experiment tracking, well, it's for experiment tracking, you are trying to track the results of your experiment, right? I think that's one kind of metadata you are going to, you are going to track, but that's not all, because for, the, for experiment, for models, you have a lot of other matrix you have to call. So right now we have a lot of experiment tracking tools, but they are only just solving part of the problem. You have to have a holistic kind of holistic view for the whole process and use some unique kind of tool for this process. Yeah, so I think that's just part of the metadata problem, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, can there are a question, can there be yeah. any risks with using a foundation model? Since it's an off the shelf model, could there be unexpected results? Well, there's definitely risks and opportunities in foundation on foundation models, and I think that's why Stanford opened the whole institution on foundation model. I mean, that, that's just not just money grabbing, but also that's that's really a important research problem right now. But so uh, just like what we mentioned in our talk, that it's really important for you for us to understand the behavior of the foundation models. We might, might not be able to reproduce them, but we can understand it from the outside as a wrap up. Like, so what kind of problem is suitable and what kind of problem is not suitable? And so is there any bias inherited from the original data set? That's, that's a, definitely the risk in the foundation model, but I think that's 
yeah, let's go. Well, I think we're going to make a lot of progress in the next year for this. Okay, our last question. Can we monitor the model performance immediately or do we need to monitor it afterwards? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, uh, there's very, a lot of different ways to uh, evaluate the performance of your model, right? So for some problem, like maybe you are doing recommendations or you are doing the real-time advertising, you might get the ground truth almost immediately. Like, so you know if the user is clicking the link you are recommending or not. If they are clicking, clicking the link, then you are doing a great job. If no, then, then you need to fix it. So for this kind of situation, you can do the monitoring and the performance evaluation almost in real time. But if, if the problem you are doing is uh, really hard and forgetting ground truth is required, for example, experts. So maybe you are doing medical examination models like to, to tell if there's the, the patient's got some kind of cancer. Then uh, this kind of ground truth require a true doctor to tell you based on, well, based on the medical data you get, then this process is going to be slow. Then uh, to support this kind of a latency and the delay between the model's inference and, uh, and the ground truth gas gathering process, you have to have a really solid foundation and infrastructure to actually to handle this kind of, so there might be a six month delay between you do the inference and you actually, and between you do the inference and you actually get an answer. So yeah, the, pro the good question is good, but it depends on what kind of problem you have, you're solving and what kind of infrastructure you have, and what, how much, how much resource you have, yeah. Okay, is there any question that you can, I'll leave you 10, 10 seconds to think. Do you have other question? or we are going to end at this point. But you can still reach out with our uh, Discord. We have a Discord ch channel, a Discord server. I'll yeah, just, just like what I said. So this is, this is a huge problem for a lot of us. And so if you want, to have a, uh, some long-term discussion with with us, or you want to explore this topic more, just join our Discord. So we are going to have a we are going to have a great time discussing this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Thanks, everyone, and thanks, Poga. And if you yeah. want to discuss more with us, please come to our Discord. Let's have a chat. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a nice day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.